and brief little update here on the tropics because we now have tropical storm fair nine uh, just formed moments ago, although a recon mission earlier this afternoon did confirm that Fernand was looking a little bit better organized. So there it is. You can see the convection uh, highlighted in those bright colors on your screen. But let's take that out, that element out, and just show you uh, the clouds. So you can see how it did start to have that circulation. Um, it has 40 mile per hour winds right now. The pressure's at 1010 and it's moving north at 15 miles per hour. Now notice that Fernand did form on the other side of Bermuda. Remember Emily? So Emily was on the western side of Bermuda. Fernand is to the south southeast of Bermuda by about 405 miles. So that's currently where the center of that storm is. All right, so here's the latest track. Uh, pretty interesting here. The National Hurricane Center believes that this will stay as a tropical storm, but it could form briefly or at least reach um, near hurricane status by Monday. So we'll see if we do get a category one hurricane out of it. Uh, some of the intensity models are currently updating because again, this is right. We're starting the stream right at the five o'clock advisory. So five o'clock, one of those key times when we have new information. So sometimes it takes a while for those models to update, but um, it looks like fair nine could make a run for forming into a category one hurricane, maybe a cat too. Some of those models did suggest that, uh, but it's really no threat to anybody here besides Bermuda. Bermuda, it will be on the other side, um, on the east side of Bermuda compared to Emily. And of course, it's not the strength or intensity as Emily was. Emily was a category, or I keep saying Emily, I'm sorry. Aaron, whoa, I don't know why I keep saying Emily. I'm stuck in the past here. Hurricane Aaron, hopefully you guys can keep up with me. I am goofy. All right, uh, so yes, uh, Aaron was a Category 5 hurricane at one time. Fernand is just expected to stay a tropical storm. Could make it to Category 1 hurricane, but we'll see. Uh, looks like some of the other models, again, are still trying to update and get themselves together. So don't mind that. That's why we are making this stream pretty short. Also, it's expected to stay over open water. It's only anybody with interest in the Bahamas, say you're um, or Bermuda, I should say, going on uh, any trips that you should pay closer attention to Fernand because otherwise it's not affecting us here in Tampa Bay and it's not affecting uh, the U.S. as far as uh, the eastern side of the U.S. as Aaron did. All right, so now that I got my names all correctly, there's the latest hurricane names. So again, Fernand, we uh, updated that now that it is officially a tropical storm. The next name on the list would be Gabrielle. Could we see Gabrielle? It's possible. Uh, low chance right now. So on the tropical update here, notice that that area um, uh, that was Aaron that has pushed off to the north northeast. So this map is a little outdated. So apologies for that. Again, this is what happens when we have these five o'clock on the dot streams, but I'm sure you guys are very understanding. Um, but down to the south there, that's the one that I'm looking at that has a 20% chance of development. That could be Gabrielle. What's going to happen here is as that system travels to the west, it will try to develop further. So let's dive into that one. That is Invest 99. Again, Fernand was Invest 90. That is close to Bermuda at this time. That has turned into a tropical storm, organized just enough. Seeing a nice amount of convection though on Invest 99. So um, it's going to interact with a little bit of Saharan dust as well as it's pretty close to the um, Lesser Antilles on the southern side of it, the Windward Islands really. They, those are the folks that have to pay attention to this system. But again, it's, it still has a low probability of developing at this time, only a 20% shot. But here are the spaghetti models on that one. So again, you can see it does want to take more of a westward direction, westward track into the Western Caribbean and uh, make a run for Central America. Now, going beyond that, this is a system that we do want to keep our eye on, even though it has a low chance of development right now. As it moves into next week and uh, the next 10 days, 7 to 10 days, that's when we will start keeping an eye on it. Most of the models do have this fizzling out. You can see that right there. Um, in a general idea that once it moves past some land, it will start to fizzle out. But 
Once it moves into the Western Caribbean, what does it do from there? It's a little too early to tell. Some of the models do kind of flare out and split it apart there. You see some models going up to the north, some going down to the south, some continuing the journey out to the west. Now, of course, the more that the system would interact with land, uh, the less of a chance I would have to have much of a lifeline. Um, for anybody curious where we are in hurricane season, if you're a Floridian, you probably know where we stand, but for anybody new around here or anybody watching from another state, sometimes we have those uh, that join us from other areas, so hello if that's you. We have the peak of hurricane season around September 10th. So we're just getting started here. Not quite as active as it was last year, thankfully, but we still have a long ways to go, right? And it only takes one storm. Thankfully, there's no major threats, glaring threats for us here at home in Tampa Bay. But again, uh, for anybody that's just joining us on the stream here, we're just doing a quick 15 minute update just to bring you the new information that tropical storm Fernon has formed uh, to the south southeast of Bermuda by about 500 miles. I have it written down 405 miles. Um, so again, this system compared to Aaron um, is on the eastern side of Bermuda, whereas Aaron was kind of a little bit closer to the US. This is expected to stay over the open Atlantic as a tropical storm maybe reach toward that category one hurricane status as we move towards Monday. But again, um, it's really not impacting that many folks. It's just Bermuda that has to be on the lookout. All right, getting to, well, let's look at some Saharan dust since we're still on the topic of the tropics. But I do want to catch you guys up on some local weather because I'm sure you've heard all those booms of thunder. We did have a weather impact alert that expired at 4 p.m. We still had a few severe thunderstorm warnings going. I'll update you on that in just a second. But Saharan dust, uh, so AL99, the one that's further down to the south, that yellow blob there, that will be encountering some Saharan dust here over the next couple days, really following behind where it wants to develop, the Lesser Antilles and the Windward Islands. So that's why it really has a low probability of developing, at least in the next uh, two to seven days. Now beyond that, once it moves, see the dust does start to lighten up. We do have another plume coming off the coast of Africa. There it is by next Tuesday. But this system will be well off to the west by then. And you can see out west in the Western Caribbean and the Gulf, there's not Saharan dust. So that's something to consider when we talk about AL99. But right now it is not a threat. We're looking at that for maybe seven to 10 days out, if it even lasts that long. But um, kind of diving into the uh, shear for the forecast as well. There is a little bit of shear. There's times that the winds are lighter and uh, AL99 could kind of weave south of that, kind of miss out on that shear. But the more shear, the better because, and that's what you're looking at with these bright colors. The more you see those darker blues and greens, that's what we like to see. The green would be a uh, lighter shear, but where you see the blue being the ocean, right? That's um, where you're not really having a lot of wind at all. And that's the conditions that these tropical storms like. They don't want strong winds because stronger winds would uh, just shear it apart. So that's the latest on Fernon, and that is how you pronounce it. If you look it up, if any questions, you can always a ask me, but you know, um, it is a tricky one, right? All right, so looking at our radar right now, we are seeing the rain really lighten up, right? I know it was a doozy this morning. We did extend our weather impact alert. It was supposed to end around noon, but man, these downpours were slow movers. So, and that did bring the concern of some flooding as well. Of course, the booms of thunder always sound scary, but thunder doesn't really, really necessarily um, make it severe weather, right? It just kind of has a louder bark than bite. Um, but yeah, so we are starting to quiet down as far as the rain goes. Still some rain trapped down to the south here, but most of it is moving off to the east. Now, my friends down in south, southwest Florida, Fort Myers, Bonita Springs, Marco Island, Naples, they are still getting hammered with that rain. But up here around Tampa Bay, much drier, nice improvements. Now we do have another round on the way for tomorrow. So how much rain did we get today? 
Well, as expected, we gathered another inch, inch and a half generally, but some areas had closer to two, three, even almost four inches, especially in uh, Pinellas County there, south of St. Pete. And I can attest to that because I live in St. Petersburg myself. And let me tell you, it was soggy out there. So uh, yeah, some areas of course received a little bit more rain than others. A uh, big concern was for Citrus County and Hernando County because they had a lot of rain yesterday as well. As we look at satellite and radar here, the driver of all the wet weather that we have, number one, we have tropical moisture in place. Number two, we also have a stalled out frontal boundary to the north of us. And number three, we have a west southwest wind that will be with us for the next couple of days. And when the winds are lighter, that means the storms move slower. So slow moving downpours dumps a lot of rain over the same area again and again and again. And that's when we have the concerns with some flooding. So. Uh, we will have another round of this as we move into tomorrow, and that's why we extended our weather impact alert uh, from 12 o'clock today to 4 p.m. Of course, it's after 4 o'clock now, so it's done for tonight, but we will get started with the rain again as we move into uh, tomorrow. So here's Futurecast. Let's check it out. This is moving into the overnight hours again around 10, 11 o'clock. It's not out of the question. We could absolutely have another isolated downpour, especially for Citrus County, but most of us will be fairly dry. Here we are around 5, 6 a.m., however, and the faucet turns back on, right? We have that west-southwest wind that's driving in all that moisture off the Gulf, and that will push some uh, significant rain towards our area, especially as we enter into about 10, 11 a.m., and that carries through into the afternoon. Most of it pushes off to the east, southeast, and then we're done with it for the day. As far as next week, we will start to dry out a little bit, um, a little bit, and we will also have a slight drop in those dew points, meaning some drier air will be to the north of us, and that will kind of help us out. Um, but it's not going to be, you know, a sudden feeling of fall, right? We wish that would be the case, but it's not. And some of the GFS models really play up on that cooler air trying to come down to our area, but don't be fooled by that. Just how the GFS likes to get extra excited about tropical systems, it also does the same about those fronts that are just too good to be true for us here in Tampa Bay this time of the year. Now up to the north, yeah, they will have some cooler weather and um, it will be nice and refreshing. But for us here at home, not so much. All right, so uh, forecast rainfall now moving from tomorrow into Monday. Well, really for the rest of tonight, moving into Monday by 11 p.m., we could gather another inch or two. So day by day, we've been gathering an inch or two, but again, the, some locations can absolutely grab more. Uh, we saw this with Citrus County and Hernando County yesterday where they had four to five inches. Today, Pinellas County, Southern Pinellas County had three to four inches of rain. So again, it all depends where those downpours spring up and how slow they are to move over the area. So we have about two minutes here. Let me just uh, recap and you know, kind of uh, bring ourselves back to center here because the reason why we started the stream, if you've been joining us throughout the week, we've been doing these updates, not to alarm anybody, just for anybody that wants to nerd out with us and talk tropics. Um, tropics are always an interesting topic for this time of the year. And of course, here in Tampa Bay, you know, we are kind of on edge. We had a very busy and catastrophic season last year. So it's uh, normal to feel nervous and anxious when we talk about tropical systems because we don't want any more here, right? We had our fill last year. We had Debbie, uh, Milton and Helene basically back to back. And yeah, it just was not good up and down the coast. So you do not have to worry about tropical storm Fernan unless you are in Bermuda and even then Fernan is nothing comparable to Aaron. Aaron was much larger. Aaron was a category five. It was a massive system. Fernan is a tropical storm. It has 40 mile per hour winds. Um, these areas, yes.